and welcome to the Pearls of Wisdom podcast. Now, we have a very special person today. I have asked him almost two months ago for this to actually get into his diary so he was free to actually do this interview. So it is my greatest pleasure to introduce Bernie Floresca, who is a teacher and an entrepreneur and an absolute all round wizard. He really is fantastic. Bernie, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Pearl. I'm so honored to be on speaking with you on your podcast. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, we did plan this for a while, didn't we? And if, yes, we, share, we, have. if we share with the listeners, we did try yesterday, but things were going against us. So we said, right now, <laughs> we're going to start again today. And we touch everything that is lucky and it's all working. So listeners, this, this is special. And the fact that it was put off yesterday means it's going to be extra special today. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into the first question here. Bernie, can you describe your career path to date, please? My career path to date. Okay, so just coming out of engineering school, uh, I was like just any other person fresh out of uh, college uh, that wanted to do a good job in the electronics field. And my background is electrical engineering. So uh, also on top of that, I know that I was moving uh, to Chicago. I grew up and went to school in the Philippines. That's where I got my undergraduate engineering degree. And directly after graduation, I graduated in March. In May, I was in Chicago. So career path, that was kind of difficult. You know, foreign graduate in a new country. I didn't have any local credentials. So I pretty much just took any job that I could. I was sweeping theater floors. I worked as a clerk typist, did all of that stuff. So fast forward that to I finally got into my career field. I had the opportunity to uh, get into AT&T um, as uh, a hardware engineer. So um, long story short, I did the career thing, climbing the corporate ladder, um, kind of did that for almost 15 years. And then they had their uh, layoffs or retrenches. So what I did at that point in time, at, at one point I had realized that um, I wanted to be the captain of my own ship. So I actually raised my hand. Uh, the director happened to be my friend at that point in time. So I said, uh, is there any way that you could put my name on that list uh, for people that you were laying off? And he did. So I kind of like uh, enjoyed life a little bit, kind of like wanted to go into business coaching because I was being mentored by a person that I had met doing stuff with business. Uh, that didn't work out. Uh, decided to go back into corporate. This time from engineering, I jumped into sales. So it was like totally a different area. And that's kind of like interesting because usually when people think of engineers, they think of people as like highly analytical, didn't have the communication skills. But actually that was one of the ways that I uh, actually uh, rose above the um, everybody else because I had a com communication skills. So sales sounded uh, like the perfect area to be in. Um, in 2018, uh, another opportunity came about to jump ship. And I guess I've been in consulting ever since September of 2018. And that is brilliant. I mean, just listening to your journey so far, you have literally been at the pinnacle everywhere you've been is the top names, the top experience, and they get you the top person to do it, which is brilliant. I say to the listeners, this is where you need pen and paper, you make notes, and we always put the description and links how you can connect with Bernie after you've listened to the episode, because there's loads of ways he's going to be able to help you. But thank you, this is really, it's already, I, already I can see it's going to be a brilliant, brilliant episode and interview. You've <laughs> Probably, you've probably covered bits of this in your introduction, but can you give me three names that, three, sorry, three things that made you choose your current career and why? Three things. Uh, one of the things, you know, like when I was branding myself, um, I always consider myself as a teacher. Uh, I've been teaching since I was like in my late 20s. And I was like jokingly telling one of the people yesterday, because uh, they were asking, they were like, are you really 57 years old? And I'm like, yes, I am. I just turned 57 last Monday, actually. So uh, I was saying that when I started teaching in my late 20s, I would sit down in front of the classroom before the class started. And, uh, you know, people thought I was the class clown when I stood up. 
and started orienting the class. So, you know, that's one thing. So it's about teaching, it's about contribution, and it's like making a difference. So those are the three things that I'm all about. Well, that, that is so brilliant. Um, first of all, belated happy birthday, because I've turned off... I've turned off all those things on LinkedIn so it doesn't tell me when there's birthdays. But so does that talk in horoscopes, does that make you cancer? Or you can I'm a Leo, or, actually. You're, Leo, you just, Leo. you're the same as my son. So that's where you see I knew it was on the cusp, but yes, so that explains <laughs> okay. a lot as well. You see. Really? I, I don't really follow that, so I really don't know because I know there are certain qualities and all that, right? So. There is, you see, it, that's a bit of a girly thing, and I'm very girly. I can't help it. Okay. <laughs> but it, it was interesting to find that out. But yes, yeah, saying you're the same star sign as my son, that explains an awful lot. That's why we get interesting. On. There's, there's, We're going to have another conversation outside of this. We are, we are most definitely, most definitely. I'm going to move on to this next one now. Now that I've completely put my foot in it. <laughs> now, um, Bernie, can you tell me what are the key val what key values does your business offer you? Key values, uh, contribution is one thing. Uh, I'm about to launch a course that's for students. So uh, I've been in business development uh, was my latest foray as far as marketing. So. Uh, what we do is I help experts find clients for their businesses. So one of the things that occurred to me, because in parallel, uh, I've been teaching all these years. So in parallel, I was always immersed in academia and always immersed with students. So one day, my, my niece kind of like came to visit me and I, she said that she was like looking for an internship. That was kind of like the last straw for me. I'm like, I have all this information about how to position yourself as a business and find clients for you. I was like, how, why can't we translate that information so that students can use the same skill set to find themselves internships and jobs? So I guess, um, did that answer the question? Oh, it does. And that's absolutely brilliant. I mean, I've worked with some of the universities here in the UK and I've helped with, I've headed up their digital comms teams and stuff so where you're saying that is absolutely perfect and for central government i did a lot to build on the um engagement piece for recruitment and i worked on their intern and their graduate scheme so everything you've said there this is where the you've heard me say the s word the synchronicities and they're there already yes. everything you're saying and i ought to tell the listeners now this is where bernie has helped me where he's actually shown me there's platforms and we'll share this at the end and i'm sure that bernie will give you more details on the podcast but there's places that you can actually reach out and connect with people be it for businesses or likewise like you've just said is is this this platform is it already set up for graduates or is it is it going to be have you got details more details you can give us yet well as far as the course that i'm launching uh, that um it, it's, I, I kind of like put it into two positions because my ultimate goal was to, to go large scale. So I was going to go to colleges and universities and obviously schools have it in their best interest to place their students after graduation. So that was my original target to go towards them. But uh, I don't think I've uh, had completed my research as far as finding, you know, um, how do I get people to know about this? So I'm going to go the first route and kind of like market it to students first. So to answer your question, the platform is not quite out yet, but it's coming soon. Brilliant. So again, we say to the listeners, you will see in the description how to reach out and connect with Bernie so you can actually get on that list. And I will also put a shout out to the listeners. If there's anyone listening from academia that would like to connect with Bernie and see if they can help and actually get this course out on their campus or on their curriculum, this is the time to do it. So by all means, share out, tell your friends, let them know that we want, that Bernie's got this fantastic offer, this fantastic course that could help you guys. So if we can help each other, by all means, connect. So hopefully, hopefully, Bernie, we'll get some, we'll get some things, sort of people reaching out and everything from there. I'm going Thank to move. You. Good, good, brilliant. I'm now going to move on to this next question, which I just throw in as a way to sort of change things about a bit. Bernie, if anything, what keeps you awake at night? 
What keeps me awake at night? Um, one of the things that my friends usually say about me is they're kind of jealous because when my head hits the pillow, I'm kind of gone. So I, I really can't think of what keeps me awake, except for the usual, like on a summer night, if you didn't turn the air conditioning on, it's kind of too hot. But uh, I, I guess I've been blessed in a way that even, oh, um, maybe when the pandemic started, but I think that was like general collective consciousness, if you will, that everybody didn't know what was coming. So uh, general things like that, but to answer your question about certain things that keep me awake, nothing really comes to mind. Well, one that is brilliant, and that also tells me you are in the best place, because nine times out of ten, if someone's not happy with what they're doing, it goes round and round and ruminates in their mind so that they can't sleep. So the fact that you can sleep is just just pure, shows us that definite, that is the right thing that you're doing. So yes. Oh, was that a trick question? No, no, it's just something, it's just going back to the other people I've interviewed. Now, I find I can be like that, or you know uh -huh. how I think of ideas, and I can think of something and just run with it. If I get an idea just before I fall asleep, that's it. I am not yeah. going to get any sleep that night. I try, and that's when I know I've got to get up and I've got to start writing it. I've got to capture all these ideas. You've heard me. How many times do I reach out to you and say, I've thought of something else that we yeah. can do? Yes. <laughs> and yeah. that's that's what keeps me awake at night so <laughs> i guess i've kind of been fortunate enough to be able to unwind before i go to bed so i guess that kind of helps me along that department but i i think i understand what you're talking about when you have something that's top of mind that you're so excited to chase uh, i can imagine how you couldn't sleep but i do try and do all my meditations to wind down but sometimes yeah. i think yeah and my head t touches the pillow I might fall asleep or I might wake up two hours later and yeah. there's an idea. It's like a, and you it's never, like a never stop inspiration, right? When exactly. inspiration comes, it comes. It does. It just means I'm absolutely shattered the next day because I end up being awake all the time. But it's always good to ask that question and see and let the listeners know just how the guests work and what impacts. And that's why I say you're in the right place doing the right thing because it allows you to get a good night's sleep. So in that mm. respect, it's brilliant. <laughs> Thank now, you. I'm going to move on and ask you the next question, building on what we've already found out. Where and how do you work best? So again, the listeners, if they want to be your clients, they know the best way they, they can connect with you. Uh, there's two ways to get a hold of me. LinkedIn, I guess, is, is where I do lots of my work right now. So all of my information is out there. Or if they want to email me directly, it's simply Bernie at BernieFloresca.com. And then the platform, I think, where you and I had met was BookOfExperts.com. Yeah. And uh, this is something that I, I guess you wanted to share with your listeners. If, if you're a coach or consultant uh, looking for strategic partnerships or looking for prospects, if you go to BookOfExperts.com, I guess they could simply type my name in and my contact information would be there as well. And that's also good to see because um, Bernie and I are also connected on Book of Experts. So if they put either of our names in, would they be able to find both of us that way? Is that the they way? They would find both of us, yes. And since we kind of like put in uh, our contact information out there, uh, that's yet another way. Or I guess you could simply do it like everybody else and just type in my name on Google. So I guess you and I are probably all over the place, right? It is. Does that mean we're famous? If we can be found, if we can be found on Google, does that mean we're famous or we're very I don't know about famous? famous. <laughs> that means we do a lot of work on the internet. That's what it means. Exactly. I know. I know. Years ago, I used to Google my name, and sometimes uh -huh. it used to scare me because at times there are about four or five people with the same name as me. So one, yeah. you have to check that it's not someone that's trying to. Um, fraudulently use your details and other times is actually trying to explain because I know my daughter did this when she was very young and she'd first got an email she messaged someone thinking it was me saying oh, mum wow. 
and the lady came back and said who are you I don't know and she said mum I've got this weird message and I had to step in and explain that it was my daughter's first time using an email address and she'd seen the whole choice I think it's when she was first using Hotmail and all these choices wow. came up and of course she sent it to the wrong person so you can imagine what was going through the other person's mind but yes that's the story yes. about how when you google yourself but it's also I don't know if you do the same. It's always good to have a Google alert set up on your name yes. because then yes. you can see if someone's actually trying to take your details in a fraudulent way, you can actually see to some extent what path they've taken and it's good to keep on top of it. And yeah. It also means like our LinkedIn profiles and where we are on other networks, that helps push our profile higher and higher up the search engines. So, sorry, that, that yeah. wasn't, I wasn't lecturing really. I'm just <laughs> No, that was a good reminder, actually, because I, I constantly check as well for, for the very reason that you state, because uh, those people are out, out there, and I think it's just prudent to be checking. So, yeah. thank you. Right. <laughs> well, we always try and add, don't we? We just add yes. to what we bring into the audience. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to move on to the next question, which we might have covered slightly just now okay. but bernie, i'll give it a different angle if we covered it <laughs> okay okay right bernie what tools do you use that makes your work life easier tools that we use so um i use pro a lot i guess as a sort of a database um slack has been used as a communication channel but i i really don't um think that uh, it, it's very efficient for, for my use right now. Um, I, I use, uh, one of the things that I find very easy to go to, and even for my classes, is to like create a Facebook group, so to speak, but sometimes institutions frown upon it if you kind of like take, quote unquote, their audience onto a different platform. So I'm kind of like leery about that. Well, one of the things that you know about Facebook is that everybody's pretty much on it. Everybody has an account, but sometimes people don't want to get in and out of that. So I think those are the main tools that I do right now. And I consider LinkedIn a tool. And then, again, that's kind of like part of the course that I'm promoting because people just see LinkedIn as a place or it started out as some place to put your uh, resume, to put your professional details but you and I know as business owners and entrepreneurs that it could be used to brand yourselves for one to find clients. And again, from the perspective of where I'm coming from, as a student coming out of college, it is a tool that you could use to find the correct people to speak to. So um, what you're probably being taught just coming out of college or that you've heard, and most people still do that, is they just use it as information to dump their information but I would say that's more uh, not being proactive in the use of it. So um, I guess, uh, as you can say, I, I guess I'm a big advocate of it because I, I really see the power of it for businesses. And I really want to share that with the academic world. Well, yep, yeah, totally, totally agree with that. I know with my central government work, I work direct, directly with the LinkedIn office in London. Oh. And I used to go to LinkedIn, and that's where I'm afraid I didn't think about geotagging. I used to check in every time I went to a LinkedIn office. I would check in like mad so everyone could see this is where I was. <laughs> and, but, <laughs> but like you say, it is so good. Now, I get a lot of my work through contracting, where I will have be put forward and just go in as that consultant to the big blue chip companies, be it public or private sector, and that's how I got the work. But tip i learned from another contractor which is something maybe our listeners would like it might be something that you could use with your courses if you mm -hmm. use linkedin and you go to a new department you go to a new company check on mm -hmm. linkedin like cio ceo who the tip the head of digital tech of tech or whichever department you're working in You've got one, you've got a photograph, so you know what they look like, so you're not going to look like a complete idiot if you tell someone, all oh, this company's rubbish and you're speaking to the CEO. Because I've been stuck in a lift like that and thought, oh my God, why did I say that? 
also you know how to reach out to them so if you want to network in a big way as well and you're literally as contractors you have to hit the ground running so you need to network the minute you get through the door if you've got that idea because nine times out of ten an organization their internal organization chart isn't always up to date so it might you might be seeing the wrong people you look on linkedin it is a great way to reach out not only does it build your network you look good you get kudos because you've actually looked at the top people you've seen the c-suite and connected but it's also a great way to learn and help you boost your career now have you tried things like that oh absolutely so uh, it, it's kind of interesting that you bring that up because i was speaking to one of the students that i was mentoring uh he had just graduated uh from the university of california i believe and uh he was talking about he was going for an interview and i asked him uh, apparently he went through the different stages of the interview so i was like so for the group that you're interviewing have you tried to find them on linkedin to find the specific group yeah. that you're going into because one of the things that i shared with him was when, when i applied for a job at sprint lately um i found out about the job through a friend of mine but once i got to the first interview the other thing that i did was to find out within the office who was actually doing that job at the moment so they may not necessarily have anything to do with the hiring but i came from the perspective of information gathering and again these are part of the skills that i want to share with people that they can do it's about job hunting uh, essentially for students but it could be applied to job hunting in general so back to my story was i researched um, you know the people who were actually doing that job because one of the last things you want to do when you're jumping from one job to the other is to find about find out about the culture you really can't find out about the culture of where you're going to usually you find that out once you're already in the organization which yeah. means you're kind of too late right because yeah. you just jump ship you are into a new organization and then you find out where it's good or bad so that was a primary reason but to make the long story short, I actually found a lady who was actually doing the same job that I was doing. And guess what? She was coaching me through every step of the remaining steps of the interview process. We were kind of like role playing. She was telling me, get this report ready, do this, do that. You know, this is what to expect. So the wealth of information, to your point, using LinkedIn as a tool to find out other information that you wouldn't normally think to go find, well, LinkedIn is full of people and people can give you the answers. So yeah. there you have it. Exactly. And the other thing you say that this is where this is where my podcasts get longer because I tend to share information. Now, I teach thought leadership and how to build thought leadership using LinkedIn. And that's what I trained all central UK government with. But you go to the C-suite and you'd show them how to write an article that's engaging and shows the key things. You get them to sit on LinkedIn groups. Um, first of all, first thing you do with any social media is you listen. You listen and read to what's being said, and then you hit the gap, because you can guarantee there's gonna be a certain area that isn't being covered and that becomes your niche and that's what you specialize in that's how you build your thought leadership if you're looking at engagement from a recruitment point of view and for a company like you're saying to promote things if you've got key directors that will be key stakeholders or figureheads within that set department and idea and get them to actually write or obviously it's normally the communications team or a pr agency that will write the content but it fits and it goes against that with that profile and that's how they build across all of the social networks because as we know social networks are massive search engines and as soon as, mm -hmm. as we started the conversation as soon as you know you can get you can hit the likes of google with your name and have it linked to thought leadership or something like that you've mm -hmm. got it made and it's going to really push your brand and your company up so yeah that's amazing that's amazing and i really like the point that you said the first thing that you said was you listen because not a whole lot of people do that when they first get in there yeah and it is and it's it's that's what i train people to do because there's so much information there and you jump in and mm -hmm. you can miss things you can completely misread a situation and people don't forget and with search engine with social media once it's out there it's out there 
because <laughs> even if you've deleted something you can guarantee that in someone's cache what you've written has been captured and it's out there so you have to make sure that you are comfortable in what you're saying i know i'm Absolutely. i know i'm deviating slightly but i did this a couple of years ago i probably made the biggest mistake of my career and I, uh -oh. I shared it on LinkedIn. I didn't share what I'd done, but I said I'd made the biggest mistake and I thanked all the people that helped me. I was working with someone's website. I had someone the other end. I can do front end stuff. I can build you a WordPress site with a template and everything. You asked me to look at the database and everything behind it. And I, I run a mile because that's not my specialism. And they wanted me to move something. And I couldn't do it. I had to ask someone else. And the someone else I asked, because it wasn't my expertise, they mm -hmm. didn't do it correctly. So my client lost their website. It disappeared. Oh. And it terrified me because there was me. Technically, I could be looking at bankruptcy because I've ruined their brand. And I went to all the people I'd worked with across central government. And because I worked with them, everyone, like the head of digital for all these things, took their people, their developers for the day, took them off the work and said, go to Pearl, see what she wants, see if you can help her. And I put wow. that on LinkedIn and I thanked them. And someone came back to me and they said, you're brave, put in that you've got something wrong on LinkedIn. And I said, yes, I wanted to address it straight away because I didn't want anyone to hear the wrong story because I shared, yes, put my hand up, I made a mistake. But I yes. went out of my way to put it right and everyone that I connected with went out of their way to help me, which showed me that I had a strong network. And ultimately the person, my client, where I've messed up the website, she came on and she messaged and she said, Paul, you did a fantastic job. Start to finish everything you did, you put it right. Where so many people would never own up to that. They'd run a mile and they yes. say it's someone else's fault. Whereas I said, no, this is me. I didn't understand that bit. I should have checked and I didn't get the credentials of other people. Right. And I know we've deviated slightly, but this is, that's an amazing story. That was awesome. Lesson, it's a big lesson to learn. And it yes. shows you've got to be strong in what you're doing and feel confident enough in yourself, but also yes. show people your vulnerability because if not for people to go in and attack you because they do the same work as you, but if you right. stand up and you are authentic and you admit, well, sorry, I misunderstood that. I got that wrong, but I've gone out of my way to put it right. Yes. You're more likely to keep clients and build a good reputation than saying, oh, no, it wasn't my fault. It was some, so they did it wrong. So you and you don't take the blame at all. Yes. Integrity actually is the word that came to mind with your whole story. So that was awesome. And they saw the whole picture. But yeah. integrity was like the the. Thing that was blasting that was the message that you were putting out and and i use linkedin for that <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's ways to see and it's just showing what you're doing what you're aiming to do like with the graduates and looking at that for academia it's yep. teaching people uh, when they start their career to understand mm -hmm. things like this because it sets you in good stead to have a good foundation to move forward. And if you make those connections at the beginning and go through, mm -hmm. connect with great mentors and everything that can take you through your whole career life, your whole working mm -hmm. life, that you're set up to succeed from the word go because you've actually yes. built and Yes. That's actually what I was going to say, because, because I focus on the beginning part, people out of school to teach them these skills so that they can find their internships and their jobs. But to your point, these skills could take them through their entire career because it's really all about connecting with people. So yeah. thank you for pointing that out, actually. <laughs> See, this is where this, I did warn you, sometimes these interviews last a bit longer because you hit on a subject and we've both got an interest in it. So we just expand on it a bit. <laughs> Sure. And I guess that's why people love your podcast, because you're all about contribution. Well, it is. It's, it's my way of serving everyone else. It's bringing your information in front of the right audience so you can connect. And you know I do law of attraction and that whole vibration thing. If yeah. we've got the right yeah. vibration put out there, you are going to attract those like attracts like. So we're going to attract the right people that will be working with you in the future. 
So now that I've completely gone off track, I'm going back to the questions again. Uh oh. <laughs> now. I thought that was the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes we expand on them a bit. But, yeah. Bernie, <coughs> what would you have done differently in your life if you'd known then what you know now? interesting um that you bring that up because because a couple of days ago i was thinking to the point of what if i didn't go the corporate route and just went as a freelancer consulting doing this when i was in my 20s so you know i was mulling over that a little bit what would i do different um the quick answer to that is i wouldn't have done anything differently because i think the whole thing was a journey where i'm at today is a result of everything that happened in the past. Because if I did this, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or whatever, um, the technology, number one, wasn't in place. Yeah. I mean, maybe the goals were the same. Um, but uh, like I said, everything's a journey. And where I am at today, or like our ability to work from home, yeah. you know, all of that, that wasn't available at that point in time. So um, my, my quick answer is I don't really think um, I would have changed anything. Um, it, it's kind of like interesting actually to look back on one's journey or where they're at. And a colleague of mine used to say, like, remember the time when you used to wish for the things that you currently have. Yeah. So uh, I guess I don't think I would have changed anything. <laughs> but that is wonderful. And you see this. This is when I love it when I get answers like that from my guests. And I've been lucky enough, most of my guests have said that, which means you are in the ideal place and you're doing what your soul aligned mission is because you wouldn't change anything. And that's why I think it's so great when people say that. Yes, you might learn on the way and the journey might be a bit convoluted and it isn't always straight but that's because you've got a few things that you need to learn on the way but it is mm -hmm. it, it's the fact that yes you're in the right place you wouldn't change anything and any learning bits you've had in between has just added to build on your character to become the person you are now which is just yeah. perfect this is what i love yeah <laughs> yeah because one of the things that you also mentioned you know like about changing things uh, things show up for you when you need it and uh, it's it's I, I like to think and it, it it took me a while to get there actually where you consider just everything is perfect it, everything is perfect in all the problems that you have everything is perfect in its imperfection yeah. so the way it's happened like yesterday for example we couldn't get on the call and we didn't control that you know i've learned to just go with the flow of things that happen with that and i think you and i know as entrepreneurs that that's the life that we lead uh, I, I know some people, actually I have a friend from one of my previous jobs, we were both in sales, and he likes to call me to talk about, you know, what's not working with the company that he's at. And I'm like, originally I was just like being a nice guy, being an ear to cry on, so to speak, but I've, I've noticed that I've gotten more curt, and I'm yeah. like, hey dude, <laughs> you pick this, you know what the options are, and you're complaining about something you cannot change. Yeah. So I guess if if everything I, I really want to get more into the space of everything that's occurring right now is as it should be and you know sometimes when you're in the thick of things that's not easy to swallow yeah. <laughs> you know because obviously there's difficulty life is hard but you we already know life is hard we already know that life is all about ups and downs so yeah. why are you talking about it so you just go with it right yeah yeah and also something i've learned only recently with yes with the law of attraction oh sorry if you can hear background i've got a magpie go shouting outside so i'm sorry if you can hear something <laughs> no, I actually know. that's that's just all birds we've got we've got quite a nice back garden with lots of different birds and the magpie oh. she's probably shouting at some of the others saying it wants all the food we've put out but that's also to the listeners if you hear any background noise it's the magpie in the garden but it diverted from me from my my, my subject that where we were talking about law of attraction what you were saying where you miss things where we grow and the last week or so i'd been so in flow since we went into the covid lockdown yes like you mentioned briefly i think we were all nervous because you didn't know what was happening 
I've got type 2 diabetes, so I was classed as being on the, um, the register that shouldn't really go out. And it terrified me because we didn't know anything. I've got, I mean, it's me and my dad at home. That's it now. And mm -hmm. when the post comes, I'll take the post and I put it to one side and I don't open it for three days because I want everything yes. to go. As soon as I've touched it, I go and I wash my hands and he looks at me <laughs> and he laughs at me. But that's, that's just what we have brought in. To begin with, because I do so many podcasts, my voice would go and it would go croaky. And when I first got that, I'm thinking, is it? Is it? I've got a sore throat. Is it that? And they say all these things. And instead of not prior to this, you think, oh, it's just a cough. But because yeah. we didn't know, you get so nervous about yeah. that. And then you learn to grow through it. Then I thought, no, I'm not going to worry. I'm going to build my business. And look at how we've come on in COVID. You and I message practically every week, be it on LinkedIn or we catch up about <laughs> something. And I've got so many ideas. I've taken my negative and turned it into a positive. Yes. We both work with digital, which COVID has shown everyone there is an easier way to work if you're online. And you and yes. I have those skills to help people get online if they need to and actually set their business up and to move forward. But with all yes. that, as we learn from the law of attraction, you create a vacuum. And the universe doesn't like a vacuum, so it will fill it with something. Mm -hmm. it's something yes you see either if you're putting out all those negative vibrations the negative vibrations come back whereas if we're saying all the positive stuff and saying oh how exciting like you're doing your course you've got all these things and i know you did mention to me you probably if you don't want to mention any more about it oh, i won't say but i think there's a book coming up so there's all these things you said i'm sure you so you're looking at me so i'll keep quiet now <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, actually, all of these are, are, are babies of the COVID era, so to speak. So, you know, for after the initial scare, you know, well, one of the biggest things that we had to do was also to get our information from, from the media, from television yeah. and all that stuff. And of course, we know how that works. Yeah. And I mean, even to this day, I have to control myself. I'm like, I'm not going to listen to the news two days in a row. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's a downward spiral type thing. But yes. All of this creativity. That's one of the things that I'm very thankful about, actually. Uh, we, we don't have to commute. We kind of like have to get into a routine because if we don't, we're not productive. Yeah. At some point, we had to like pick up from where we were at. And as a result of this shift, so to speak, all of these new things were being born. And you and I choose to focus on that. So I'm loving yeah. it. Yeah. So this is where, that's where it's so good. And it is what will we do differently and nothing because it just makes us what we are now but we learn mm -hmm. we learn from that journey the whole time which is so good to see i will move on because it might actually fall in this next question might help to answer some of the things like even if it was just to talk about the covid situation but bernie what is your biggest challenge and why my biggest challenge is myself the space in between you know like i'm holding my hands over my head so really and that goes for everybody else yeah. uh to your point back to like covid uh all this uncertainty all this you know what am i going to do now uh where am you going to get the income uh, from if this stops and that stops it's usually it's not obvious um that it's really ourselves who stop this but um one of the things that we do have control over, and I'm a big proponent of this, and so you see it all over my posts, you know, to your point of being a thought leader, I can like reverse it and I always use the hashtag lead your thoughts. Yes. And that's like in every moment that we're alive. So regardless of what you're thinking about, like you were thinking about diabetes, or you're thinking about the next client, or I'm thinking about what to do with my course, everything is really a thought. So in every moment, I'm very cognizant of choosing what it is that I'm thinking of so that I can lead it to where I want to go. So I guess that was a long answer to answer what's stopping me, but what's stopping me is me yeah. because you and I know that when you're in the thick of the, I like to call it the drama of life, actually. We're such drama queens and I don't know because we see it in movies, we see it in books, right? Because it's always about, you know, the struggle. If there's no struggle and everything was like nice, and all that good stuff, there's nothing to talk about, so to speak. But 
again, from the perspective of lead your thoughts, do we always have to go through the struggle to get to where we want to be? Once in a while, I choose to not have any drama. So I choose to lead my thoughts. Oh, that is, that is just pure perfection, really. And it's so nice to see. Because when you know that, again, I go back, you are on the right path. And what you're doing is your passion. And it shows in everything you're talking about and it's coming through. You can hear it in the timbre in your voice and everything. It's just wonderful. And that's where it's so good. And I say to the listeners, I did tell you pen and paper. You've probably written a book by now from the amount of information you've already got. But it is. this is what's so good about this. I'm now going to move to the next question. Could almost have been covered from a previous one. But as a child... What did you want to be and how close to that dream are you now? I wanted to be a medical doctor, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. So um, most of my other siblings are in the medical field. Growing up, I wanted to be a, a doctor, but um, I guess that didn't happen. So I'm a, I, I guess I'm a doctor from the perspective of, you know, I like to work mindset with uh, people in general. So like even my students, one of the things that I, I've always mentioned is I'm a teacher, number one. The technical information that I'm imparting to them, like whether it be electronics, it be math, or career stuff, that's kind of like the headliner, if you will. But the part that really interests me is being a doctor of your thoughts. So again, I guess I, I suppose I go back to lead your thoughts. I, I, I guess mindset is like mm. the big thing for me self-development and I guess law of attraction that's why that was kind of like another field that I uh, was so uh, attracted to me yeah yeah and it's, it's so good and as well that's where it's nice to see I mean because I don't think I've shared this on the podcast you're lucky you're gonna be the first guest that's heard uh -oh. because this is where people say they never turn it and say, so what would you like to be? So I'm going to add, this is me, what was the biggest child thing um, as a child. Well, I say in my teens, people used to say to me, what do you want to be? And I used to say, prime minister, prime minister. Oh. And I want to go into law. I was going to be a barrister. That was my thing because I had, we had a strong female leader at the time, love or hate uh -huh. the position but it was a great role model for women and girls growing up. And that was it. But when you're 12 years old, and I used to head the debate in societies, and they say to me, what do you want to be? And I'd look at them and I'd say, prime minister. It's like when you're very little and they say, what do you want to be? And you say, king or queen or something like this. And it, it's <laughs> something that doesn't seem possible. But the closest I got to it was working with the UK government, even from wow. the, the digital comm side. But that was my idea. That was my passion. And it's like you said, it's going through and seeing for both of us, we might not be doing what we wanted to do, but there's a little bit of it that still means that we're touching in that area that yes. first interested us. Interesting. But that's why I brought it up so we could actually compare and see. And we say yeah. like attracts like. And with that and the law of attraction, there's so much that we're saying we might be in different fields and some of it is similar but we yes. do reflect what the other one has done and some of the journey has been similar as well. Interesting. Thanks for sharing, Prime Minister. <laughs> You're not going to let me live that down now, are you? <laughs> no, I can see that. That's actually awesome. Thank you for sharing. But it is, that's the thought leadership piece is actually saying, yes, you can go out and you can, you can, bring in the following so if we look at the social media side mm -hmm. all of us in our own small way are leaders within our network mm -hmm. because we mm -hmm. put out a thought and an idea and the size of our network and following that's how we start to build it up and everything so we can all mm -hmm. be quite quite forceful at times i suppose because it depends how yeah. you actually lead your network and your following yeah. and what you want to say so it's definitely yeah. it's, worth, it's worth considering yeah and the world needs a lot of that right now in, in this day and age with everything that's going on so i mean everybody needs to be a leader so that that's i'm glad that you pointed that out we have our own circles of influence and in our gut i think we kind of like know what what the right thing to do is yeah. so when people step up to the leadership uh, you know 
role, so to speak, for whatever is going on in their lives. That's really what we need today. So thank you. I mean, I can remember studying, I mean, I studied a lot of philosophy and idealists in my degree. And there hmm. was there was I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. I would have wanted to. <laughs> All I did was English, but I did like psychoanalysis of the story. So I went into the likes of Jung and um, Freud and stuff like that. But to, I think it was Foucault that said the whole idea about history and how it's recorded and that's how it's reflected in media. No one truly knows from, from maybe mid 19th century onwards, no one truly knows what the real history is because it's always been recorded by the media. So it depends yeah. what the political standpoint is and what the ideology yeah. of that company that was actually doing the um the filming as to what side i mean i don't i think we've all seen it with the covid idea where they show you a line of people photographed and it looks like they're stood right next to each other because they've photographed at a set angle and if they go to a different angle or a different viewpoint they're standing the two meters away and it yeah. depends what do you believe in like you said about not listening to the news two days running I've treated myself, I've got one of the brand new iPad Pros, you know, the, the 2020 ones. And the first thing I've done, because when it went to download, it downloaded everything off of my phone. And I've taken uh -huh. all my news apps off because I don't want to have the news coming through. Because as we've said, leaders of our own network, we're, we're that connected on a global scale with people through our networks. Mm -hmm. You hear what the truth is anyway. So you don't mm -hmm. get that fear and dread that the media are showing. If you just share from people in your network, how's everyone feeling? Is it easy to get around? What's it like going to the shops? You don't mm -hmm. get the fear and dread that comes from the media side. And I know, see, I've gone off at a tangent again, but this is the no, way. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> it's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I've got there's there's a book up there somewhere. I've got to stop. <laughs> I've got to think about all these things. But it is this is where when you understand it, where all these things come together, who your key influencers are and why, and then mm -hmm. stop and think why are you influenced by that? And like I said about making the mistake, and I shared it on LinkedIn, it's mm -hmm. how you deal with that. And if you look at like I can remember growing up, my dad was a god to me. Everything he did was wonderful until I got mm -hmm. to an age where I understood certain areas we were talking about. And I talked to him about it going, no, no, that's wrong. And I think, but dad's a god. He can't say, I can't be different to him. And I sleep on it. But then you realise as you grow up and form your own opinions, mm -hmm. sometimes they're not the same as others. But that doesn't mean you're yes. wrong, doesn't mean they're wrong. It's yes. just a separate opinion. But actually yes. learning that, and when you look at the media, we're seeing a particular viewpoint and opinion. And if we step away from it, we have far greater understanding because we can look across the board at everyone's opinions and see which yes. one we agree with. That's so awesome. <laughs> I guess that's where all this infighting comes from. Because, And then to your point, you said something that was very important. It, It's not that you're wrong and it's also not that they're wrong. So if you think about it, it's everything is valid actually, but we like the finger pointing say, no, I'm right, no, I'm right. So I love that you pointed that out. But that's, that's I mean, in a way that goes back to my debating things, it's actually seen. And that's what I was taught when I first did debating. If your opposition has done a better argument stand up and agree because i did that my first debate i won my debate but i stood up at the end and i said even though i've debated for this one side because of more information i've got i now fall on the side of my opposition because that to, in my eyes they gave a more detailed and more reasoned argument which again shows you are prepared to agree or disagree and it doesn't make you look bigger or smaller. All these people that have to yes. win. If you stand up and you win, but you're in the wrong, what is the point in that? 
acknowledge <laughs> when you've made a mistake or if you've misunderstood and grow from it. Well, I don't yeah. know. Sorry, I'm, I sound like I'm preaching and I don't mean to be. <laughs> no, I'm following you. <laughs> Right, now that I've gone completely off track, I will bring back to the question. And this is my guilty pleasure. <coughs> I absolutely love books. I've got loads of them. I've got them on Kindle. I've got them on audio books. I've got them on hard copy. So what I always add is, can you name three titles of your favourite books and why you've chosen them, please? Three titles. Um, I was kind of excited that I found the very first book that got me into self-development. And little did I know at that time, I was in my teens, that it was about law of attraction. It didn't call it that, but the title is Three Magic Words yeah. by U.S. Anderson. That's like one title that I have. Um, I actually, as a teenager in the Philippines, uh, technology or, you know, back in the day when you still had telephone lines long story short i used the information from that book to manifest a telephone line into our house so that's one of the books uh, another book is and you're going to tell that i'm really a total geek of law of attraction is the art of allowing by S esther hicks abraham hicks is one of the other thoughts that i like uh, uh, books rather uh, the third one is i i can't really one but uh, a couple of titles that I'm currently reading is uh, You Are the Placebo by Dr. Joe Dispenza because I'm, I'm like trying to go into the, the field there you know, longevity is like one yeah. of my interests and uh, Wisdom Codes by Greg Braden so that's four sorry Pearl I kind of like overshot it by one. Oh, but no that's nice I've had some people that have said like the whole all the harry potter thing all the harry potter books in class oh, that is nice. one title so you see it's nice and everything you've said that's where it resonates with me it will resonate with the listeners the yes. whole law of attraction thing you can see why we talk so often and like yes. yesterday when it wasn't working and you said universe is telling us something and i'm thinking but i'm supposed to be professional these things are supposed to work and so it was so nice to understand that and yeah. yet today's interview it's just flowing isn't it and i am letting you yeah. get the odd word in aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> no this is fun so thank you for having me again <laughs> it's, it's just wonderful we're learning so much and to the listeners mm -hmm. the wealth from those books that you've just shared those titles are absolutely brilliant and in fact the last one has given me an idea for a title for my books, the whole play yeah. on, the, on the wisdom piece. So I will just keep quiet about that for now. <laughs> okay. Oh, I know you're going to send me a message about it, so I'm okay. <laughs> I, I will move on now because otherwise I will keep here for ages and it's not fair. <laughs> could, you say, could you say, who would you say are your key influencers and why? Key influencers. Um, one was an aunt of mine, Sister Can Candida Bautista. She was a nun uh, in her 50s. I guess she was in administration. She was the school principal when I was like in first grade, second grade, whatever. And then I think I was in my teens and she uh, volunteered to become a missionary as a religious sister in Haiti, actually. She was in her 50s, but she had to learn French. She had to learn how to to ride the uh, horses or donkeys or whatever it is that they do, but she went out on a mission. So from the perspective of, um, I guess, contribution, I guess, that, that's kind of like where I get this. She was like in the religious order. Um, an another person that I kind of like looked up to was an uncle who was in computer programming because going to college, I guess that's one of the reasons I got into electronics engineering because I wanted to get into the field of computers. He was a computer programmer. Um, and incidentally, though he was a, a computer programmer, he was also an entrepreneur. He got into taxes and he was in all to all these business ventures. So you kind of like see the parallels in my life right, right now. I went up the professional path and then kind of like branched into the professional, I mean, entrepreneurship. So I guess those are the people that I can think of at the moment. 
Well, that is absolutely brilliant. And it's so good. The fact that you mentioned people in your family as well, because it's always good to see that people refer back to that. And I've also realised by doing this, I missed one question out. So I'm going to have to go back, but it fits in nicely uh -oh. to this. This is where, when I first asked it of a few people, they said, that, that brings the ego in. And for everyone that works in a spiritual way and law of attraction, you're not necessarily supposed to consider ego. But, no, but I told you everything is perfect, right? We all have it. So it, it just is to me. So we all have ego. So go for it, Pearl. Right. So, Bernie, what is, sorry, where is it? Yes. How do you want to be remembered? How do I want to be remembered? I think it's all over what I've said so far. I want to be remembered as a person who contributed and it's kind of, you know, people just say in general, just just uh, that uh, when I do, when I leave, that I left this world as a better place, that I kind of like did my contribution. And to add on top of it, I did it in a way where I was fulfilled. And, you know, when they say follow your bliss, yeah. that I accomplish contribution by following my bliss. Yes. Is how I want to be remembered. And this is what you're already delivering on. And again, I reflect back all the guests I have, and that's the synchronicity, the connections, because I invite everyone in because it's people I know, or they come to me and they're in my network and say, Pearl, I'd love to be a guest and everything. But these are the reasons why you will have already fulfilled that. What you do with your network, with your connections, when I see your posts, you are already doing that. And that's what's so special. So in that, wow. I thank you. I just thank you because uh, you've you. already delivered on that. Thank you so kindly, Pro. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> now I have to take a big deep breath for this. This is the longest question. And I think to myself uh -oh. each time, why did I write this? But it's nice because it brings out another side to the guest. Now, okay. Bernie, if you could share a great meal with anyone, alive or dead, what would the meal be and who would it be with? Uh, what would the meal be? Um, it's got to be with my mom, that's for sure. Uh, she passed away last year. So obviously I'm in the space where I'm missing her a lot. I kind of like shared too that I have a picture of her on my counter and whenever I eat meals, I, I'm like eating it with her so uh, what would it be it would be snacks or anything I guess that we both loved so back in 2018 she had an ailing like the aunt that I actually described to you that was kind of like one of my models she was in a retirement home for nuns and my mom and I went to the Philippines to visit her in the convent so since we were trying to get over jet lag you know trying to adjust our systems to Philippines time uh, when they were serving meals or whatever, we were sleeping. <laughs> and when we were awake, we were hungry. There was nothing to eat. So to, to your point, uh, I, I really enjoyed that, that we were just like having mini picnics in yeah. our room, so to speak. And I do the same because I used to visit her every weekend. And, you know, either she, she'd cook or I'd cook or, you know, we'd go for takeout or something like that. Um, it would just be the time, I guess, just spent with them and just enjoying their company and time so and that is so so special and i feel your loss i lost my mum six years ago yesterday mm. so it's, oh, it's wow. a certain yesterday time too. and so it's it's close and we think about them all the time and there's certain things that it is it's so special and again when people bring up their family with this question when i first set it i thought oh i'm gonna have all these great famous people that every all my guests will say oh they want all this and almost everyone without fail has said family a specific close member of family which again resonates that's what's so special about every guest i'm having this is what's so special about you and the synchronicity and the connections and everything you've said about this and who your influencers are and who you choose to be in that meal. And this is what the listeners will hear and will connect with 
And as we know, this is like attracts like. These are the people I told you, this is a great interview. And I know when it's good because I get goosebumps up my arm and it will be, the, and I know that's when it's all starting and the energy is good. And that's what the listeners come back for. And it is, I mean, the rapport we've got just talking about this, you'll probably come off this and think, God, that woman can talk. But it's, it's a nice connection and everything. So with that, yeah, it's lovely. I'm enjoying it, Pearl. <laughs> It's so in that respect, enjoyable. so thank you thank you for sharing that now we're coming to the last two questions the time okay. has just shot past now this is your turn to just shout about everything that you do your company so everyone and the listeners this is where i've said you've got paper and pencil you write everything down but all these links will be written in the description so you can connect. I'm going to put the two questions together so that you can sort of just basically tell us everything. So what services and items do you offer to your clients or customers? And do you have any special offers at present that we can share with the listeners? Okay. Uh, the first one is just a community of people, uh, coaches and consultants, I guess, who want to like I said earlier, it creates strategic partnerships. It's bookofexperts.com. So that's a way to be, just like here, just to be in, the, in a group of people who are kind of like up to the same thing. You can either find your prospects or you can find uh, people that you could uh, strategically partner with is the first thing. But my baby at the moment is what I said earlier, is in the field of academia. I wanted to bridge the worlds of academia and business whereby the same tactics that we use to find um, clients for businesses, I want to change the higher education world in bringing that same information out there. Because yes. uh, I think that's, that's a big gap that's out there. And obviously students are near and dear to my heart. And you know, most of my nieces and nephews are college age right now. So that even kind of like pushed that, it even made it more salient. So. Um, if you have any connections or people listening to your podcast who have any connections or people in career services, I would love to talk to you to see what makes that world kind of tick. So we could like tailor the information. I still want to bring the information over, but obviously if, if there's a need that I'm seeing that is not perceived as a need from the other end, then we have a big problem. Yeah. So um, I think that was uh, pretty much it that I have at the moment, Pearl. But you do have other things coming up. And this is my chance to say, because this has been just wonderful, can I invite you back for a return visit to tell us more about what's happening in the future? Oh, absolutely. I, I, how could you say no to that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely yes right now. And I'm going on record. It's recorded, literally. <laughs> and listeners, you've heard Thank it. Thank you. And this is where I say to the listeners, make so sure you subscribe to the podcast because then as soon as I add every new episode, you're the first to know so you can listen. And Bernie, it just comes to say thank you. Thank you so much for being a guest. I've loved it. I hope you, I think, well, I think the listeners can hear the energy we've got. It's just been brilliant. And thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge and wisdom and all the ideas you've had. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Same here, Pearl. Thank you so much. And this was so much fun. Let's do it again. <laughs> Definitely.